There are lots of ways to make it easier to build complex view hierarchies in SwiftUI. And one of them is to use properties, to create a view as a property inside another view, and then use that view inside your layouts. For example, inside content view, I could make two text views as properties. I could say, let motto one be a text view with a string Draco Dormiens, and then let motto two be a text view of Nunquam Titillandus. Titillandus, there we go. Never tickle a sleeping dragon. Then inside the body, I can use that as if they were just regular views. I can say vstack motto one, motto two. You can, of course, then apply modifiers to those properties if you want to. I could say motto one with a foreground color of red and motto two with a foreground color of blue. Also works. Now, creating views as properties can be really helpful to help keep your body property code clearer. Not only does it mean you can avoid repetition, but it also means you can get more complex code out of the body property. Now, Swift does not let us make one stored property that depends on another stored property. because it would cause problems when the object is created, which one of these two is created first. This means trying to make a text field bound to a local property will cause problems. However, you can make computed properties. For example, motto one here could be var motto one returns some view and then push this text inside like that. And that code also works great. This is actually a really great way to carve up complex views into smaller chunks, but be careful. As I've explained previously, if you look at the view protocol in SwiftUI's generated interface into what's actually doing behind the scenes, you will see the body property has this view builder attribute applied automatically. So if you want to send back multiple views, they get wrapped silently in a tuple view so they work correctly. You don't have that with your own properties. And so if you want to send back multiple views, you have three options to work with. First, you can place them inside a stack. You could say var spells is some view, v stack text of uh, lumos, and text of obliviate, like that. So put them in an explicit stack. If you don't want to specifically organize them in a stack like this, you can also send back a group. Now when this happens, the arrangement of your views is determined by how they're used elsewhere in your code. For example, if I'd had down here, uh, I want to have a V stack with spells inside, that's fine. And as a V stack here, will control the layout of the group up here, so they play vertically. Whereas if this was a h-stack with spells inside, now it'll be a h-stack. That wouldn't have happened if this was explicitly a v-stack, because now it's a v-stack inside a h-stack. So group becomes kind of layout agnostic. The th final option is to apply the view builder attribute by hand. So you could just do this, get rid of the group, get rid of the v-stack, and just say spells is at view builder var spells. And now it will do the same thing body does. It'll wrap it up in a tuple view automatically. Of them all, group, vstack, view builder, I prefer to use view builder because it mimics the way body works. It's exactly what body does already. So it's making our other properties work the same way as body, which is great. However, massive proviso, I am also really wary when I see lots of folks cram functionality into these properties and then use view builder to make it go away and then worry about it another time. It's usually a sign the views are getting too big, too complex and need to be broken up into smaller views. Speaking of which, let's tackle that next.